privilege for us to be bringing this little message to you this Lord's Day evening. And what we're going to think about for a few minutes is about different aspects of mankind. You see, the Bible says, what is man that thou art mindful of him? This is referring to Almighty God. And the Son of Man, that thou visitest him. And of course, we read that uh, particular scripture in Psalm 8 and verse 4. I want to read a few verses in Job chapter 14 with regard to man. And keeping in mind what is man that thou art mindful of him. You see, as far as I'm concerned, man is a complete failure from start to finish. But let us turn to the scriptures 
And just before we read that, Job 14, we'll have a little word of prayer. Lord, we thank thee this evening for the privilege of bringing this little gospel message to those who are listening online. We thank the Lord for your goodness to us today already, and we pray that as we turn to thy word, that thou wilt give help, and that you'll give that liberty in the Holy Spirit. And Lord, our prayer is that if there's anyone here today who is listening to this message that don't know Christ, that don't know the God-man, that don't know the man who was absolutely perfect, the sinless Son of God, we pray they'll get to know him even this evening. Lord, bless us and help us, for we ask it in Jesus' name. Amen. Job 14 and verse 1. Man that is born of a woman is of few days and full of trouble. He cometh forth like a flower and is cut down. He fleeth also as a shadow and continueth not. And dost thou open thine eyes upon such a one, and bringest me into judgment with thee? Who can bring a clean thing out of an unclean thing? Not one. Seeing his days are determined, the number of his months are with thee, Thou hast appointed his bounds that he cannot pass. Turn from him that he may rest till he shall accomplish as an harling his day. For there is hope of a tree if it be cut down, that it will sprout again, and that the tender branch thereof will not cease. Though the root thereof wakes old in the earth, and the stalk thereof die in the ground, yet through the scent of water it will bud and bring forth like a plant. But man dieth, we've got this word again about man, but man dieth, and wasteth away, yea, man giveth up the ghost. And where is he? As the waters fail from the sea, and the floods decayeth and dryeth up, so man lieth down and riseth not till the heavens be no more. They shall not awake nor be raised out of their sleep. O oh, that thou wouldst hide me in the grave, that thou wouldst keep me secret until thy wrath be past, that thou wouldst appoint me a set time and remember me. If a man die, shall he live again? All the days of my appointed time will I wait till my change come. And we know that the Lord will bless this reading of his own precious word. I want you also perhaps to turn to Second Samuel just for a short reading. In Second Samuel chapter 12, we have these uh, words at verse 5. And David's anger was greatly kindled against the man. And he said to Nathan, As the Lord liveth, the man that hath done this thing shall surely die. 
and he shall restore the lamb for full, because he did this thing, and because he had no pity. Listen to what Nathan's reply was. And Nathan said to David, Thou art the man. Thus saith the Lord God of Israel, I anointed thee king over Israel, and I delivered thee out of the hand of Saul. And we know that the Lord will bless these readings of his own precious word. I want you to see, first of all, in these readings that we have had this evening, I want you to see, particularly with regard to this story in 2 Samuel chapter 12. And we all know this story well. We all know that David had sinned grievously with Bathsheba. He had lost it and he had uh, sinned against this dear woman and it didn't end there. He engineered murder so that Uriah the Hittite, her husband, would be put in such a place in the battle that he would most certainly be put to death. You see how sin can spread. Sometimes you know someone and they'll start a life of small crimes as young people. They'll maybe do what we call shoplifting. And then they'll progress further into it and soon their life has gone out of control and sin has dominion over them. You see, the Bible says, whosoever committeth sin is the servant of sin. Now, when Nathan said to David, he told him this little story about the poor man who had only one lamb. And the man who was a very rich man had a big flock of lambs, sheep. He was a rich man. And when a visitor came to visit the rich man, instead of him going out to his own flock to kill the lamb and give the food, the meat to his guests, he went and he took the only lamb of this poor man. And David was really angry. He was cross. And he said, this man must surely die. And then Nathan turned round to him and he said to him, David, thou art the man. You see, David was pointing his finger at someone else as he thought, but that finger was actually pointing back at David. You see, he was the man that had taken another man's wife and had sinned grievously. And you know, very often when we talk about pointing our finger, and you know, I remember as a little boy at Sunday school in children's meetings, there was a dear man came from Scotland. His name was Dan Cameron, and they called him Uncle Dan. And he made very repeatedly uh, a particular little phrase that I never forgot. He said, when I'm pointing a finger at you, there's three fingers pointing back at me. And that's why we need to be careful 
that we don't be too quick pointing our finger at someone else. For the chances are, and the probability is, there's three fingers pointing back at us. Here was a man who was pointing his finger at himself. You see, man is sinful by nature. The Bible makes it absolutely clear, and I quote that verse again from Psalm 8, what is man that thou art mindful of him? You see, God made man in his own image. We read that in the book of Genesis. But you know, there came a time before the flood that the Bible tells us that God repented that he had ever made man. God was sorry he had made man. Why? Because of his sin, because of his disobedience, because of his corruption. Isn't it the same today? Corruption in governments, deceit in society. And you know, some people try to tell us that you know, man's not too bad. He's not too bad. There's something good about man. The Bible tells us that man is a failure from the very beginning. I want you to not only see the man who pointed his finger at himself, but when we read from Job 14 and verse 1, and we read these lovely words, man that is born of a woman is a few days and full of trouble. Here we have man's plight. Man that is born of a woman. You see, the Bible makes it clear that there's only two genders. There's man and there's woman. The Bible tells us that God made us in his own image. And the Bible tells us that man and every one of us have been born of a woman. And you know that plight starts at birth. Because the moment we're born into this world, we're born sinners. David even went as far as saying, In sin did my mother conceive me. And here we have the plight of man. And you know, it's quite evident from a little child and how we love the little children and how we love the grandchildren and they bring us so much joy. But you know, from an early age, they never have to be taught to do wrong. They do that without any problem. They have to be taught to do right. And very often, they're more inclined to do wrong. That's because they've been born sinners. That's because of the plight they're in. And can I just say this evening to you, as you listen to this little message, if you haven't had your sins dealt with, you still have this plight. Man that is born of a woman is a few days and full of trouble. And then it goes on to say, he cometh forth like a flower, and is cut down. You see, we're also reminded in verse 10, but man dieth and wasteth away, yea, man giveth up the ghost, and where is he? And here we're reminded of man's parting. 
You see, we're only here on this world for a short time. The most that we're promised is three score years and ten. And that by reason of strength they be four score years, yet is their strength, labor, and sorrow, and it is soon cut off, and we fly away. We're only here for a while. You know when you see people and their great objective in life is to accumulate uh, property and possessions and, and they're living as if they're going to be here forever when all of the time we're only here for a little while. You know, we heard today about a sad incident away down in Larn at one of the bonfires last night. A massive bonfire trying to make it bigger and better than everybody else's bonfire. And the poor man slipped and fell. And he's in eternity. And you know when we read that verse, but man dieth and wasteth away, yea, man giveth up the ghost, and where is he? That is the most important question. Where is he? I remember coming on a, an accident, a fatal accident many years ago, coming up at Christmas time. And I remember the, the, there was two off-duty nurses at the scene and they were trying to make the man comfortable and they were turning him as they waited for the ambulance to come. And I could hear one saying to the other, he's gone, he's gone. And you know that day, that particular question came to my mind quite a bit. Man dieth, yea, wasteth away, man giveth up the ghost. And where is he? And I thought about that dear man, and that was going through my mind. Where is he? Is he in heaven or is he in hell? And I was so delighted to hear, in spite of the awful tragedy of that dear man, that he was saved. He had prepared for the great eternity. He realized that he was sinful. He realized that he had a plight. He realized that someday he would have to part the scene of time and he had made preparation as we're reminded in Amos 4 and 12. Prepare to meet thy God. Ah, dear friend today, are you like this man, David? You're guilty and you don't realize it? Nathan came as a servant to show David that he needed to repent. And we have in Psalm 51 his confession. He said, against thee only have I sinned and done this evil in thy sight. But you know he went on to cry, Restore unto me the joy of thy salvation. Maybe there's a backsider listening to this little uh, recording. And you've got away from the Lord. You've lost your joy. You've just lost your love for the Lord. Wouldn't it be great if you came back to him today? And those of you who are still not saved, we would say in the words of that lovely hymn, O turn while the Saviour 
in mercy is waiting and steer for the harbour bright for how do you know but your soul may be drifting over the deadline tonight. If you would like to get in contact with us through Korean Independent Church, you certainly would be welcome to come on Sunday mornings at 11.30. And if you would like fellowship as one of the Lord's people, you would be welcome to come on a Wednesday night at 8 to meet for prayer and read in the scriptures. Let's have a wee word of prayer as we bring this to the Lord for his blessing. Lord, we thank thee that you have helped us today. We thank thee for Johnny and his gift for being able to bring this message to people in their own home. We thank thee not only for giving him the ability to do it, but giving him the exercise to do it, and the help to do it, and the willingness to do it. And we pray to bless him and all his family. Remember everyone listening to this message. Bless every home represented. Remember the sad home down in Larn through this awful tragedy. Lord, we pray that you'll speak through this awful sudden death. And Lord, may we hear of people coming to Christ, for we ask it in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen.